water. Are you kidding? It rains all the time. We'll never run out of water. We've got heaps of water. Can we have water? Ah, that's alright. There's plenty of water to go around. Good thing we have heaps of water. Man, it hasn't rained here in months. I know, we're going to need so much water here. Good thing we have heaps. So, do you reckon there's more people coming soon? Oh, there's plenty. My whole family's coming soon. Oh, plenty of water to go around. Can I get a glass of that? Well, there's not very really much left. What? I know. Hey, what's wrong? We can't rely on rainfall to supply all of our drinking water anymore. There's too many of us. We need to think of another way to get water. The ability of humans to obtain and utilize available fresh water has always been a primary survival need which nearly every organism shares. As humans, we rely on available fresh water for drinking, hygiene, cooking, very importantly, agriculture, and much more. For many of us here in Australia, we rarely give it a second thought. But today, nearly one billion people in the developing world don't have access to it. The issue of water security has never been more prevalent than it currently is, and no doubt will become in the immediate future. With the increasing impact of climate change on a global scale, as well as the increasing pressure being placed on this natural resource by our rapidly increasing population, which is set to exceed 9 billion by 2050, sustainable management and alternative solutions to the use of this resource is needed. One such solution, which many arid countries, including Australia, have adopted, is the desalination of salt and or wastewater. This documentary has a number of key purposes. Firstly, to describe both sides of the resource sustainability issue and consider the consequences of each in terms of ecologically sustainable principles. In other words, the environmental, economic and societal perspectives of desalination. Secondly, to explore this potential solution within the Australian context and then in comparison with another country. And finally, based on this, to offer a conclusion of the future of desalination. Desalination is the process of separating saline water into two streams, a freshwater stream and a brine stream. There are currently two major types of desalination methods which are being used, multi-stage flash and a membrane method known as reverse osmosis. In Australia, reverse osmosis is the only type currently in use or proposed for future use. It involves seawater being forced through a membrane under very high pressure in order to remove the salt and other impurities. Lime, Fluoride and chlorine are then added to the fresh water and it becomes ready to drink. The process of reverse osmosis desalination has attracted a significant amount of attention and become a valid solution to the water shortage problem. It is this type of seawater desalination which the New South Wales Government of Australia adopted when a desalination plant in Sydney was opened after identifying a need in 2006 for a reliable source of water that didn't rely on rainfall. The following is a map of the area which the plant supplied water to. While this potential solution appears promising, it is a technology which is commonly considered a capital and energy intensive process. There are also scientific concerns of the environmental effects of the process, which include the concentrate and chemical discharges to the marine environment and the emissions of air pollutants. Therefore, desalination is usually seen in a negative light with respect to ecologically sustainable principles in that it costs large amounts of both money and non-renewable energy to operate such a plant. However, the Sydney desalination plant is 100% offset by renewable energy in the form of a wind farm, and as a result, this plant is an example of a practice of desalination moving closer to meeting all of the ecologically sustainable principles. However, this plant still costs a lot of money to run, money which the skeptics say is being wasted. The New South Wales government established a regime for the plant to only operate at full capacity when levels of stored rainwater in Warragamba Dam fell below 70%. In other words, the plant is a safety net in periods of low levels of rainfall. Ironically, high levels of rainfall were recorded and the dam overflowed in 2012. However, the desalination plant still operated continually as a part of a two-year proving period, resulting in millions of litres of free water washing into the environment. As a result, the plant closed in July 2012 and will only recommence operation when dam levels drop below 70% again. 
While operating during the first two years after opening may have been an economic waste, the plant does provide a long-term solution to water security. This future of water security was pointed out by Chris Davis of the National Water Commission. If you really only have one or two sources of water for a city like Sydney, then you're up the creek. You have to diversify. The plant in Sydney is not actually that big. By accident or design, it is about the right size to keep the dam levels on an even keel, but not too big that you have wasted capacity. Another arid region which requires alternate freshwater resources, much like Australia, is the Middle East. Desalination has been utilised on an enormous scale there to combat this issue. One of the first plants ever to be built was in Kuwait, however Saudi Arabia produces the most desalinated water in the world. More than a billion litres of seawater is treated every day at the Al Jabal desalination plant in Saudi Arabia. The power necessary to produce this much water at the plant is more than all the desalination plants in the United States combined. Unlike in Australia, oil is currently a plentiful resource in Saudi Arabia and the cost of this is low. However, using this non-renewable resource to power desalination on this scale is environmentally detrimental and is not a sustainable solution. Based on this research, I have come to the conclusion that the issue of desalination, much like all resource sustainability issues, comes down to risk management. With our rapidly increasing population, coupled with the effects of climate change, it is very likely that we will not be able to rely on rainfall in the future to supply our global fresh water. Therefore, I believe that desalination can definitely be a part of our overall solution to our future global water security. However, only if it is done in a manner which holistically factors in the ecologically sustainable principles of people, place and profit. Thank you very much.